Let's write the balanced net ionic equation for CaCl2 plus KOH. This is calcium chloride and potassium hydroxide. So the first thing we need to do, we need to balance the molecular equation. The molecular equation is right here. I can see that I have two chlorine atoms here and just one here. Put a two in front of the potassium chloride. Now I have two potassiums. So let's put a two in front of the KOH, the potassium hydroxide. Those are balanced, two hydroxides. We have two hydroxides here, calcium and calcium. So this is the balanced molecular equation. Now, for the net ionic, we need to write the state for each substance. That looks like this. So compounds with the chloride ion, in general, they're very soluble. Compounds with potassium, very soluble there. And then calcium hydroxide, in general, hydroxides are insoluble with a few exceptions. And these are the strong bases. Potassium hydroxide, that's a strong base. And calcium hydroxide is considered a strong base. So everything here in our net ionic equation, it's aqueous. And what that means is there's no reaction. We started out with a certain set of ions dissolved in the liquid. They're still there, same set. Nothing has happened. It's helpful to look at the complete ionic equation to understand why that is. So when we look at the complete ionic equation, in the reactants we have this set of ions, and in the products we have the same set. They're organized a little different, but it's the exact same thing. No reaction. If we crossed out spectator ions, we'd see in the reactants we have a calcium ion, again in the products. Two chloride ions, again in the products. Two potassium, and then two hydroxide. Everything's a spectator ion. That means it starts out, we have these ions here. We finish, we have these ions here. No change. This is Dr. B with the net ionic equation for CaCl2 plus KOH, calcium chloride and potassium hydroxide. But there's no reaction because the ions we start with, they're the same as the ones we finish with. Thanks for watching.